All right, in this lesson 1.8, we're going to be talking about multiplying decimals. So our objective is to multiply decimals to solve problems by multiplying them, finding a product when we multiply decimals. So when we first look at our first example, multiplying decimal, find the product, that means the answer uh, of a multiplication answer, or a multiplication problem, um, of 2 and 73 hundredths times 4. So when we do this, we do not need to line up our decimals like we did in addition and subtraction. All we do is we put everything, we line it all the way up uh, with our 4 to the furthest to the right and uh, where our 3 is uh, in our hundredths place. So we look at 2.73 and we count up how many decimals does it have. Well, I see it has 1 and it has 2 here. So it has 2 decimals. Now 4. 4 does not have any decimals because... It's a whole number, and if we were to put a decimal, it would be to the right of it. But it doesn't have any, so it's zero. So if we multiply this out, 4 times 3 is 12, KRI 1, 4 times 7 is 28, plus to 1 is 29, and then we KRI 2, 4 times 2 is 8, plus our 2 is 10. So we get 10.92. Well, where did this decimal point come from? We didn't put it in there. Well, yeah, the book put it there, but... We have to determine how many decimal points our answer will have based on how many decimal points the problem had. So since 2.73 had two decimal point, or two numbers to the right of the decimal and 4 had none, altogether they had 2. So our answer has to have 2. So let's try another one. So we have 42 hundredths times 6 tenths. So 42 hundredths has two numbers to the right of the decimal. And 6 tenths has 1. So if we were to add this up, 2 plus 1 is 3. So our final answer will have three, decimal, or three numbers to the right of the decimal. So we take 6 times 2, we get 12, KRR 1. And 6 times 4 is 24, plus that 1 is 25. And we put a 0 in up front. So when we, if we didn't have the book decimal point right here, our decimal point would start right here at the end because it's, it would look like 252, but we know that's not our full answer. So we'd have to move it one, two, three spots over in order to get our final answer of 252 thousands. So now here's where you check and see if you can get the right product. Pause and then we'll go over it. All right. For quick check, 1a, find 6 times 13 hundredths. Well, I am, I'm going to use some space outside the box here. So I have 13 hundredths times 6. Now I put the 6 in the bottom just because I only have to multiply one number instead of multiplying 2. Uh, 1 and 3 times 6 compared to 6 times uh, the 1 and 3. So 6 times uh, 3 is 18. Put my a down, carry my 1. 6 times 1 is 6, plus the 1 is 7. Now, I don't... I can multiply it times 0 and get 0. I don't need to do that. But when I look at my final answer, I have 13 hundredths and 6. Well, the 13 hundredths has two numbers to the right of the decimal, and the 6 has none to the right of the decimal. So my final answer needs to have 2. So I'm going to move my decimal point over twice. So our final answer would be 0 and 78 hundredths. So let's look at the next one. 4 and 37 hundredths times 5. 5 times 7 is 35, carry our 3, 5 times 3 is 15, plus the 3 is 18, carry our 1, 5 times 4 is 20, plus our 1 is 21. And our uh, answer is not 2,185. We have to look at how many decimal points, or how many numbers were to the right of the decimal point. So our 4 and 37 hundreds had 2, and our 5 had none, so our final answer has to have 2. So I'm going to move my decimal point over twice, and I end up with 21 0.85. And for C, we have 8 tenths times 7. 7 times 8 is 56. And our 8 tenths had one number to the right of the decimal, so that our final answer has to have one number to the right of the decimal point. 5 and 6 tenths. And our last one for this, uh, we have 22 hundredths times 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. And our final answer needs to have two numbers to the right of the decimal point. So our final answer would be 0 and 66 hundredths. 
And here's our second quick check, so hopefully you continued on. Find each product. Well, remember, if we don't have a multiplication that x, and we have it in parentheses, that means multiply. So here we've got 0 0.3 times 0 0.2, or 3 tenths times 2 tenths. 2 times 3 is 6. And each number here had one number to the right of the decimal. So our final answer needs to have one number, or it has, it, the total problem had two numbers to the right of the decimal, so our final answer needs to have two numbers to the right of the decimal. So if I have 6 and I move it 1, 2 to the left, my final answer would be 0 and 6 hundredths. Do you see how our 3 tenths and 2 tenths, this had one number to the right, and this one had 1, so our final answer needs to have 2. So let's look at B. 1.9 times, and I'm going to put our uh, 5 and 32, uh, 32 hundredths on top, simply so I don't have to multiply more. Um, 9 times 2 is 18, care our 1. 9 times 3 is 27, plus the 1 is 28. And 9 times 5 is 45, plus the 2 is 47. Now I need to put my placeholder 0 down here. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 5 is 5. And I add, 8 and 0 is 8, 8 and 2 is 10, 0 down, carry my 1. 7, 3 is 10, plus the 1 is 11, 1 down, carry the next 1. And 4 and 5 is 9, plus the 1 is 10. Now my final answer is certainly not 10,108. But I have to look at how many numbers were to the right of the decimal point in my initial problem. Well, I had two numbers to the right, the 3 and the 2, and my 5 and 32 hundredths, and then one number to the right in my 1 and 9 tenths. So my final answer needs to have three numbers to the right of the decimal. So I move my decimal point over three times, and I should end up with a final answer of 10 and 108 thousandths. And let's look at this last one here. We have 14 hundredths times 9 tenths. Well, 4 times 9 is 36. Carry my 3. 9 times 1 is 9 plus the 3 is 12. Not 126. I have to look at how many numbers to the right of the decimal. You had 3. So, 1, 2, 3. And so our final answer is 0 and 126 thousandths. Let's carry on to this last example here. Cameron read 196 words in a minute. Robert reads 1.6 tenths times as fast, so 1.6 times as fast. How many words can Robert read in a minute? So to estimate this, I'm going to say, well, Robert can read uh, almost twice, uh, or uh, not twice. If he, it's an easier number to work with is uh, 196 is more like 200. If we're going to estimate, just to kind of get an idea of if our answer will be reasonable. Uh, 196 is around 200, and 1.6 is kind of close to 1.5. So 200 times 1.5, well, I could work that out and say 200 times 1.5, multiply, uh, and actually let's do that the other way, uh, and say 1.5 times 200. Uh, so I don't have to put all these on my extra placeholders. I know that I'm going to have two placeholders here, so now I can say 2 times 5 is 10. Carry my 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. I have one number to the right of the decimal, so it's 300. So we're not looking at that. So, or it's going to be around 300. So let's see if our answer is around that when we actually multiply it. So we've already it's already done the work for us but we look at how many numbers are to the right of the decimal well there are zero for our 196 and there's one for our one and six tenths so when it multiplies out uh, we need to add now so this would be a placeholder zero so six and zero is six seven and six is thirteen carry our one one and nine is ten plus the one is eleven and carry our next one and we have three hundred thirteen and six tenths which we need to make sure that our final answer has one number to the right of the decimal. So Robert can read about 313.6 words in a minute, or 313 and 6 tenths words in a minute. So is our re answer reasonable? Uh, yeah, it is reasonable since uh, 300 
thirteen point six or three hundred thirteen six tenths is close to three hundred. All right, so I'll pause right here. You go ahead and try this, and then we'll check it in here in a second. All right, so to check this, uh, one pound of tomatoes costs a dollar and twenty nine cents. To the nearest cent, how much do two pounds and seventy five hundredths or two and three quarter pounds uh, of tomatoes cost? Well, if each pound costs a dollar twenty nine, that's our unit rate. So one point two nine times and we're, we have two and seventy-five hundredths of them, uh, or two, two and three-quarter pounds of tomatoes, so let's find out how much it's going to cost. Five times nine is forty-five. Okay, our four. Uh, five times two is ten, plus our four is fourteen. Okay, our one. Five times one is five, plus one is six. Add our placeholder zero for our seven. Seven times nine is sixty-three. Okay, our six. Uh, 7 times 2 is 14, plus the 6 is 20, 0 down, KR2, and 7 times 1 is 7, plus our 2 is 9. Now we have our 2, so I want to put 2 placeholder zeros. 2 times 9 is 18, 8 down, KR1, 2 times 2 is 4, plus a 1 is 5, and 2 times 1 is 2. So when we, oh, let's not run through our whole problem. So when we add these up, Five. Let's write this just a little bit neater here, so we can work with that. Um, Six hundred forty-five nine thousand thirty and five thousand eight hundred. All right. So when we add these together, five and zero and zero is five. Four uh, three is seven. Six and eight is fourteen. Care my one. Nine five and one is fifteen. So it's certainly not going to cost $15,475. We have to look at how many decimal points are to the right of the decimal. Well, in our problem, I had two numbers to the right in a dollar twenty-nine, and I had two to the right in the weight of two and seventy-five hundredths. Uh, so if I add those all together, I need to have four numbers to the right of the decimal. So I have one, five, four, seven, five. I need to move my decimal point over four numbers, so one, two, three, four. So the total cost, and remember we have to write this as in money, so when we go to the hundreds place, that four looks at the seven, it says, well, you're greater than five, so I need to round up. So it's, it, this whole thing will cost a dollar and fifty-five cents for two and seventy-five uh, hundredths or two and three quarter pounds of tomatoes. Let me know if you have any questions.